Hello and welcome to Taiwan Today. I'm Natalie So. Today I have with me David Hall, the founder of the business coaching company USBCT in Taiwan. He trains um, professional teams, and one of the areas he trains them in is design thinking. Um, David, I'm curious about what this is all about, design thinking. Can you tell us what design thinking is? All right, well, design thinking uh, essentially kind of turns a traditional uh, design method on its head. So it's, it, you have the opportunity to try something and um, without investing a lot of time and money. Uh, the traditional method was to, uh, you know, you, you develop, you, you spend, you know, years and millions of dollars, maybe you're, you're, you're creating, you're developing a software, uh, you're coding, and then what you do is you push it out onto your customers and essentially hope that Everyone they buy. likes it. <laughs> right, you kind of build it and they will come uh, kind of mentality. Where design thinking, which was uh, developed at Stanford uh, University at the, uh, the D School, kind of turns that on, it, on its head. And you begin with understanding the pain of your customer, their problem, their pain. Why pain? Well, it, Why it's, the focus on pain? It's emotion. It's kind of, you know, with uh, being inundated with, with technology and sensory overload, we've kind of gone full circle back to putting the human uh, in, in the center again and focusing on relationships and focusing on emotion. What is the emotion of your buyer? What, what real pain do they have? What problem are you solving mm. for them? So it's like you're fulfilling a need that they have, right? Whether it's like... It's hard for them to use their phone in a certain way or to get up in the morning or whatever, whatever, right? Right. That's the beauty of design thinking, and I love it. I, I just apply it to, to everything. It's, it really is. It's, it's not a linear process. It really is a new mindset. Um, what, you, you, what you begin with is interviewing the, uh, the customer or the prospect and understanding you know, what is your pain. And then what I want to do is I want to empathize, okay? I'm not sympathizing, but I'm empathizing. I'm putting myself in your shoes and really understanding and relating to what your pain is. So people didn't do this before when they're making products? No, it's just kind of, uh, you know, what you would do is you, you'd come up with a product, you patent it, and then you, you know, you kind of push it out and you guard your idea <laughs> and, you know, say, this is mine, no one else. You know, now it's kind of about open source. It's about sharing. It's about understanding mm -hmm. emotion. But no, they would just push it out, uh, you know, using kind of the infomercial, the interrupt, you know, kind of like the uh, the evening TV news, the uh, dun 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 with the lights and the you know to get your attention. You know, people are on their their phone, but the interrupt doesn't work anymore. That that does not work. It's about relationships and it's about interaction and understanding the emotion. That that method of you know pushing it out because people are inundated with you know. Uh, trillions of emails and, and text messages and TV, you know, it, it doesn't work anymore. So how many people would you have to interview to, let's say you want to develop a service or a store or a product, you'd have to interview 100, 50, or what would you say is it? There's, you know, it depends if it's, you know, B2B would be less, um, B2C, uh, you know, it might be more. Um, and you want to talk to them personally. It's called, you know, we say get out of the building. Uh, <laughs> talk to, it doesn't mean sending out surveys. Mm. Uh, it means getting out and talking to people personally. If it's B2B, um, it's going to be fewer. So it could be 20, 30, something like that. If it's B2C, you might want to talk to 100 people. The more, the better. So how do you know, though, that these people really represent the people that you are going to be selling to? What if they all have this, you know, certain weird idiosyncrasies that don't really matter <laughs> to or, your service? Exactly. Well, maybe <laughs> skewed, we say, and uh, right, your results may be skewed. Well, you want to focus on your, your customer segment as much as you can, your, your primary customer. So you want to identify them uh, as best you can. You may find out that may change. So, you know, that's the whole idea of design thinking. 
you get out there and talk to a few people, then you come back and develop a, a problem statement. So you want to actually write that out like a, like a thesis statement. You know, the thesis statements that we used to write in you know, high school and, and college that drove us crazy. Well, you need, it kind of forces you to put it in one problem mm. statement. You know, what is their problem? And then you can begin to, you know, prototype and, and test. But it's kind of back and forth, back and forth until you get it right. So this is something you do for new companies? It can be new companies and it can be established companies. Um, Harvard Business Review did an entire issue uh, a couple months ago on design thinking. And uh, they say it's not just for products anymore and it's not just for startups. Uh, it's for services and it's for uh, corporations and it's for anyone in the corporation. Uh, it could be finance. Um, if there's a customer touch point, if uh, they're sending out, uh, if finance is sending a bill out to a customer, that's a customer touch point and that's an opportunity to use design thinking. Hmm. And do you um, work with a lot of companies in Taiwan about this design thinking? We're seeing more and more. Uh, this year alone, uh, uh, a lot of universities, uh, well, several universities, NTU has added, uh, I believe, if I'm not mistaken, has added uh, design thinking to their curriculum. That's interesting. <laughs> right. And uh, we're seeing it more and more. And companies are calling us. We've done several workshops. And we're seeing uh, a more and more demand for design thinking because now companies need to develop their own products and services and they need design thinking to do it. What do you think about uh, the entrepreneurial culture in Taiwan? Because over 90% of Taiwan's companies are, are small and medium sized companies. So what have you um, observed from you know working with these companies? Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Well, it's amazing. I mean, if you look at um, uh, social, local, mobile, solo mo, they call it S O L. <laughs> you know, we've heard a lot about so. I mean, you can go to a tea shop, and these people, you know, these small shops are innovating. You can um, get on your your mobile phone. You know, they call it social local mo uh, mobile, and you can say, okay, I'm looking for bubble tea, and uh, you can punch it into your your GPS and it says, hey, there's one around the corner. Um, you can get a 15% discount. So, you know, I, I walked over and I, I ordered a, a bubble tea and uh, they said, hey, if you like us on Facebook, uh, you know, you'll get an additional discount or whatever it is. So, you know, little tea shops are innovating. I mean, they're, they're using th this type of um, uh, creativity and innovation. So, you know, the big companies need to be doing it or they're going to be disrupted uh, very, very quickly. So you see the spirit alive actually in Taiwan. Oh yeah, it's there, definitely there, uh, especially with, you know, with the startups. I mean, we, we've seen hundreds of startups, the governments, uh, the administration has made it a, a, a major initiative to, uh, to do as much as they can to, uh, to promote uh, startups. I mean, we need to see more uh, intrapreneurship. We've seen entrepreneurship, but in the, the bigger companies, we need to see more intrapreneurship and we're developing uh, a kind of a back and forth, uh, what's called an EIR. It's an entrepreneur in residence where entrepreneurs can go into companies and they can uh, kind of spread that idea of entrepreneurship and uh, companies can invest in startups and executives can be mentors of startups. So they're not, uh, you know, they're not islands. Uh, they should be working together and it, it applies to, to both small companies uh, SMEs, startups, and large corporations. Mm. And I know you've coached a lot of startups to help them be successful. What would you say is the key to a successful startup? Well, uh, I, I helped build uh, 10 startups of my own uh, during my career, and I've been a, uh, a startup mentor, startup weekend judge. Uh, I was part of the Mayor, uh, Mayor KP's uh, uh, angel uh, committee to talk about how we can promote uh, startups in Taiwan and how we can attract global uh, startups to Taiwan. So this has been a major initiative of the, uh, the administration to attract uh, you know, tens of thousands of uh, foreign white collar workers, to attract hundreds of startup companies. Uh, 
And I believe that um, a lot of the startup companies here are thinking too small. We need big dreams. Mm -hmm. We need big visions. It needs to be uh, scalable and global and sustainable. And I think that's what is going to make uh, Taiwan startups successful. Well, what do you mean by big visions? Like that we can be the best in, in Taiwan in, in this particular service? Or what do you... Can you define what you mean by thinking big? I think they need to um, really, what we do is, and, and we work uh, with startups, uh, coaching, mentoring. We have a, a startup incubator. And we work with uh, startups really the same as executive, uh, our executive coaching, to bring out you know, their inner core values and to develop that vision because they need to look deep inside themselves. It's not something you just come up with a dream and come up with a vision. You have to really do some soul searching to find out what are, you know, why do you do what you do? What is your, your real purpose? Why are you really doing it? You know, and that takes some time to, to get that out, but that's what you need. So why is that so key? Is it because it gives you the drive and determination to figure out how to succeed or why is it getting that uh, deep um, sense of motivation so well, that's, key? Well, absolutely. I mean, that's what's going to sustain you through those tough that's times. True. There's the, uh, <laughs> what's called the, uh, the, the uh, curve of uh, change where, you know, you begin a project and it's, you know, it's uninformed optimism. It's like, you know, I'm, <laughs> I'm really excited. I'm doing this. And then it kind of reality sets in. We call it informed pessimism. <laughs> and then you're, you're down here in the valley, what's called the valley of despair, you know. And uh, that's what gets you through, right? Mm. So you need that vision. You need that purpose to get you through and see, okay, I can make it. I can be successful. Mm. So you would say vision is a key. And, and what about um, innovation or understanding the market? Are there any other keys to having a successful startup? Well, uh, I believe in, uh, you, you need to, to, to look at what are the you know, top uh, disruptive you know, trends. Uh, I follow uh, one of the top futurist thinkers in the world. He used to be my, uh, my neighbor in Boston, Ray Kurzweil. Uh, he's has an institute there, uh, he was a, 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 an advisor to Google. You need to look at, you know, first to get your ideas, you need to see, look at, the, look at what areas are trending, what areas are going to be disruptive in the future, what mobile applications, you know. Don't just uh, create another uh, social networking, you know, a website. Um, really look at, you know, what what's going to be the future trend mm. and not just what is your idea and then get out there and then you take that and get out and see hey is this really going to be a pain that your, your customers have have you noticed any one thing that often leads to failure and that people need to avoid to be successful uh, i would say uh, you know, not using design thinking and focusing on too many things. Uh, some of the uh, startups that we work with, um, we follow um, a plan called, uh, it's called design, plan, and pitch. Um, and a lot of the startups are, you know, very, very smart engineers. They have difficulty putting what they have, their idea into a, uh, what we call a, a business model canvas and it has nine different areas in it it really uh, helps them to focus their idea on you know really who's their customer how am i going to make money what is my value proposition you know what problem am i solving in the marketplace and you know how am i going to do it and how am i going to make money doing it they have difficulty packaging it so being very clear right on what that one thing is that they're bringing yeah, to this world, right? <laughs> right, absolutely, absolutely. And, and, and the value behind it. They should follow the the process, and they mm. should um, they should go through the design thinking. They should follow the uh, the business model canvas, which we've adapted for a multicultural audience as well. That's wonderful, David. You have so much, uh, so many great insights to share. And we're so glad that you're in Taiwan helping us become more global and successful. <laughs> well, I appreciate, I appreciate you having you. We're, we're, having a, we're taking another group to uh, Silicon Valley in uh, March. We have a group there now. 
And uh, you know, if anyone's interested in uh, in uh, attending that group, that's a, that's a great way to meet companies like Google and Tesla and, and Airbnb and uh, and to uh, to uh, advance your global uh, uh, networking skills. Well, that's excellent. We ha we've been talking with David Hall, the founder of USBCT, a business coaching company here in Taiwan. He's been giving us a lot of great insights into design thinking and startups. Uh, thanks for joining us, David. And thanks for joining Thank me you. on Taiwan Today.